according to Statistics Canada, the dropout rate for boys from high school is 56% larger than that of girls. I pass some statistics around, you can look at them. The consequence is that there are now more girls enrolling in university than there are boys. And while we have achieved, or almost achieved, gender parity in Canada, if we keep doing what we're doing, if we don't change, in 20 years, or maybe 30, we may end up with an inverse gender gap, which would be as bad as the gender gap that we used to have just a few years back. Dear Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and guests, one of the main reasons that I think this gender gap is happening is because while we were making the education environment more conducive for girls, the pendulum swung too far. And we have now feminized the education system. This may sound very provocative, even incendiary. Don't throw anything at me. <laughs> But if you consider that 65% of all doctorates in the education areas are female, and if you consider that most of the ones for the technical areas are male, well, we know that there's a male bias on the technical areas. Well, there's a female bias, necessarily, in the education system. But the statistics only take tells part of the story. <coughs> don't shout, don't push, don't run. We've all heard that. In the education system now, normal <coughs> male traits are considered undesirable. Even illnesses, the same way that in the past, female traits were considered illnesses or character weaknesses, character flaws. Just consider the diagnosis for ADHD, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. <coughs> the Canadian Medical Journal estimates that we are overdiagnosing it for boys. There is a, the diagnosis for boys is six times higher than that of girls. In fact, had I been born seven years ago in Canada, right now, I'm pretty sure I would be diagnosed with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of being considered an overactive, overachieving boy. <laughs> I couldn't stay awake in class. I was always distracted. I would finish my work faster, and then I would get bored. These days, physicality and rough playing is considered violence. To keep your soft emotions on the wraps is distrust. And to express your strong emotions like excitement or like anger is disruptive to the learning environment. Coming home with a scratch or a blue eye used to be a badge of honor for a boy. Hey, look at my scratch. Now, parents want to involve the school, and sometimes even the lawyers. And here a question for the group. What do you consider is more desirable in the education system now, in school? Collaboration or competition? What is being encouraged in the school right now? Collaboration. Well, it's my observation that little girls play together. Little boys play against each other. We fight swords, we wrestle, we run, we try to get there faster. To compound the issue, on TV, the male role models are dinguits. They may be so smart, <laughs> always with a character flow. And TV ads, wow, male, always dumb. They cannot even drive a nail, and then 
they need a honeydew list. <laughs> Have you seen that ad? When they talk about the woman, is the list you do yourself. Of course, because nobody tells a woman what to do, right? <laughs> That's a double standard. <laughs> standard. Or the ads, where what we consider normal male bonding is portrayed as stupid. I can take it, even laugh at it. But what about little boys? When they get the message constantly that the normal way they react, how they feel, is stupid, they must be stupid, right? We have tried to get bad stereotypes for girls out of the way because we realized that they were wrong and they, and they hurt. Why is it okay to do that for boys? And let me be clear, I don't think for a moment that we should go back to the old madman days. But the real question is, what can we do to reverse that gender, gender gap or to stop that uh, gender gap reversal? What can you do for your children or your grandchildren? What can I do for my children? First of all, we have to change. We have to acknowledge the differences. We are equivalent, but we are not equal. I had experience to go to an all-male high school, and I felt right at home. Our classes were 50 minutes long with 10 minutes between classes, and we used that time very well to express all our energy, to burn the energy. And there was a space for rough playing, for, for fights, for a lot of physical activity. And yes, there was a lot of discipline. But there was room for chalk fights. And of course, there was always room for activities with the all-female schools. <laughs> So I, I really think that we should go back, or at least have split gender classrooms, where the learning styles are respected for male and for female, while still keeping interaction between both genders. But what can we do in our daily lives? First, let boys be aggressive. Let them be active. Let them be foolish. Encourage free range playing, where you don't provide a safe, environment. Let them do things that you would consider <coughs> stupid. Let them take them risks. Get a scratch or two, maybe even a broken arm. It will heal and he'll have a great story. What I'm asking you today is let boys be boys! <laughs>